so this is Siri. He's been known for 21 years in the marketing team, and he's going to talk about the new controversy uh, for Twitter guys. So. Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming, especially given the other graphics you just made before. <laughs> so, um, I did have a slide, so um, just in case people want to go that way. So, um, right, when I came up with this talk, it was like, how can we improve our relationship with I've been in forums and Twitter and all this, and you know, always makes waves every day through anything. And I've always been fascinated by how topics come about and when, when things arise. If somebody makes a, uh, a change, there's just so much noise. And, and it, it always bugged me. Why, why does it happen, you know? Um, and so, where do we have topics, right? We have social media, forums, like Reddit, slash that, uh, Bugzilla, um, uh, GitLab, uh, blog posts that we write, when we go to conferences. I've been to conferences and people are coming to me. And Invariably, some, they get pissed off by something <laughs> we did. Uh, and then the personal interactions, so sometimes between developers, uh, sometimes between organizations, all of that. And where are the uh, A lot of them is ideology, uh, sometimes deep technical differences that we have, culture. Asia versus the West, uh, misunderstanding, and then the human condition, which is which is my favorite one because that's where the frailties of being human, right? We're, we're talking about people intentionally gaslight or misunderstand or um, belong in um, uh, tribalness. We're all very tribal people, and uh, a lot of that comes in because when we're when we're out there, we want, we want validation, right? So this is where I talked about the human condition. So with that in mind, when when we do when we engage, especially in social. One of the great things about social media is you can get really large scaling audiences. Right? You know, I see like 1.5 million followers, or you know, things like that on Twitter. Um, they amplify messages. People share, reshare. This is a Facebook model. Uh, you can get a whole bunch of shares, millions of shares. So your messages can permeate throughout the internet. It empowers your beliefs. Have a belief that gets that we see that every day today in social political circles, um, and it's a great way to express your brand. Then, however, those messages can be amplified negatively. If somebody is misunderstood, it goes in, and sometimes that becomes true, even when it's not. Um, the empowering beliefs could be the wrong beliefs. We see that today in the political circles. Uh, and conflicts is where your band, uh, your brand is exposed uh, can also lead to very poor exposure, uh, where something's negative very strongly associated with you. Um, and then you end up in damage. So, how do we how do we avoid a lot of this? That 
Yeah. One of the things I really find uh, interesting about how we fit in, and I'm specifically talking about Twitter right now, um, in general, because every every organization in the group has its own sort of culture that uh, it needs to figure out how to do it, right? We all have strengths and weaknesses that um, we have that we need to work on or um, build on or things like that. So at least for Gnome in particular, um, we have generally a we don't um, say, we don't, like the way we come up with things it seems to be sort of shows up. So it's good to be, it's always good to really think clearly at it. Um, I've also found that a lot of times we don't, going back to the surprise, right? Having a roadmap really helps. And being said, so not all this is going to do this. Release it later, or going to do something. At least people know because then, when people are surprised, that's where conflict comes in because you didn't meet an expectation. And if that happens, the the conflict that arises, and now you're going back and forth, you're trying to figure out what it is, uh, or somebody has based plans on what you're doing, and then you surprise them. So if people are, are depending on you then it's always good to have a roadmap so that there are no surprises. One, one of the things I remember is um, the GTK CSS stuff, right? It would break every, the messaging was that it breaks things, which is not the truth because theme developers were using an internal API that would really break. And, but every time, Put something out there, and uh, and that hurt us a lot in terms of branding. Every time this would come up, and one of the things I had told Matias was that telling them ahead of time, even if they're you know, even if they're breaking API and or something like that, telling them ahead of time really sets their brain to okay, I know something's going to break. That means I I they they can understand how much resources they're going to. So that kind of thing. Uh, other conflicts we have we were talking about those as a bunch of our players. We don't we don't outline how we accept. So if you're if you're a novice developer, what kind of patches do you accept or GTK? Those that's not really there. And one of the things I wanted to change is, especially with GitLab and whatnot, it is is document what changes you uh, a lot of times we see conflicts within Mozilla because they don't know what the context is when providing a contribution. If you're doing a contribution and they say, here it is, well, this isn't what we want. But we never told them ahead of time, this is what you want. And uh, and so, and it's a great exercise, a mental exercise of, uh, of what um, you do want to accept because now you're thinking ahead. Rather than just getting a, getting a contribution you have, and then, well, maybe yes, no. I mean, it's giving guidance is always a great way to to really clearly say this is what you want. Um, final thing is is people behave poorly. All the time, and so even if it's just really important that you maintain a certain level of decor, right? Uh, if you're, you know, you can't go back and say if somebody calls you, you know, some kind of word or whatever it is. I mean, returning that is is in the same kind of heat is not going to work. It's always about the in this case. Anyway, you're always trying to be the most reasonable person. So even if most other people are reading, the person who's acting poorly will be judged harsher if you're being reasonable. Even if you're not, uh, you know, even if they're 
even if you're if you're having uh, trouble with that person by being reasonable, um, you can't avoid conflicts because then people will join you as a team. Yeah, you're right. Even even though I want this to happen, at least he's being reasonable. That's that's really actually the important part. Uh, so, what was your response? So, when I came with this talk, right, I was thinking, okay, I'm going to talk for 45 minutes and then, and then but um, I, I really wanted to do a discussion, um, mostly because I like to hear what, I mean, I always hear a lot of what's coming from the community, right, uh, the, the peanut gallery, but I don't hear a lot from all of you about what's happening. So the discussion is really for my own education and people to think, uh, or for everybody's education, uh, what people think about the various conflicts we have, uh, and, and maybe applying what we were talking about. And how, how, how does that play a role? Or what could you have done something better? Or is there, so it's sort of a way to kind of improve our own way of dealing with the community, because we do have a, a, our, a large share of our conflicts. So, so I'm going to give one case study, right, just, just to throw one out there, uh, for lack of any, this one it came up uh, recently, the Bill Michelle interview, uh, which, memory leak, <laughs> 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 that's everybody in code, so that's our favorite, right? Um, so, so I'm gonna open the discussion. What what do people think uh, about uh, how this came about? Did we did we communicate correctly? Uh, have you seen some of the feedback you seen? Or what? Anybody want to open up and uh, talk about it? Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm looking at you though, because <laughs> you you did you put an extremely amount of information uh, on your blog post. I mean, what, what did you, what you think? What did you think? Um, okay, well, yeah, I guess it was, uh, um, I, mine wasn't the first one. So no, George, George's was the, was the first, yeah. right. So I mean, he, he, was, he was very enthusiastic about the tactics problem, and, uh, you know, it was, uh, you know, he's a good enough pronouncement. That, a lot of yeah, and, and including from our from ourselves, right? Uh, we this is the first time I actually saw our our own community so sensitive about the words we use. They like so George has got a lot of flack for calling it a memory leak, <laughs> and, and and I think he was very disappointed by that. He, he did not. He was unhappy that he got, and I was one of those. It wasn't a memory leak per se, but now now that term is being associated. Right. So, but, yeah, I mean, one thing I think that we could have done better is sort of uh, talk about that within the community and how we need to use memory leak. Because I, I agree, memory leak is probably not the right way to message it to uh, the world at large. But that it creates an expectation that, oh, it's But really, it's a problem that we've had for five years. And it's unbelievable. Like, so when I read people's reactions, I'm like, wow, I'm going to turn this up. <laughs> I'm going to speed this up. Um, it's unbelievable the kind of reaction people have. The, the, so when you associate memory leak, uh, this is unacceptable. This is unacceptable. And and this in this very declarative form, I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> Even after you explain, it comes back. It's amazing how it keeps repeating itself. Yeah. I think it's because we try to do this. Uh, yeah. I'll do the reverse. I'll do the reverse. 
So instead of moving Shell Blue, would be a Blue Shell Blue would be Blue Shell Performance Improvements. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or, uh, or uh, Efficiency Improvements. Or, 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 Right. But if you say, I mean, even, to, even today, right? Oh, yeah. He, he says instead of, uh, you know, it, it's doing reverse. So instead of saying memory leak, you say performance improvement or uh, something of that nature, right? And you're, you're improving something, not addressing a problem, right? Uh, and so there, those are good, that, and that's a good point, Carl, is that in how we say that. But I was just, as I was saying, we have memory leak again. In the title of the talk. <laughs> that was yours, right? <laughs> Sorry. Was it? No, no, no. Okay, I was, suddenly I was like, wait, was it somewhere in this room? But I'm just saying that. You put up a slide. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the slide. <laughs> so, but, but, uh, it, that's the fascinating nature. It, doing open source marketing or engagement is so different than, say, from because you're you love all volunteers and you're hurting cats. Like, how do you get everybody aligned when you're, you know they're they're all disembodied? They're, they're all all over the place. I mean, having that kind of organization is it's challenging all of us. Because you don't you're we're not under any central control. So you know that's that was something um, that. So going forward, I guess in this case. It'd be good to uh, lay things out in a more positive manner. Uh, and so the other, I had another case study, which which is a not not a list change that happened. I mean, I have never seen a, a file manager create so much havoc in a community whatsoever. It's a file manager. I mean, if you think about it, most of the time, how often do you use this thing? But yeah, yes. The number one most used thing in the whole world is uh, metrics and frequency. People really use these things. I, I, it blows my mind. I mean, it is such a passionate subject. I have never seen anybody get more angry than the changes in all this. And, um, and I, I, I don't know how to, this particular one, I don't understand how to address that because it is like the single biggest conflict we have. Every time there, people keep going back to this. and yet I, I, it's, it's one of those things because people, ex people expect a lot of things out of that now that I find. Uh, I mean, what do other people think? I mean, is it actually about the tech? There, there seems to be a perception that GNOME developers just know best, and they impose their views on the user. Right. That's like a, and it's, it's the same with memory leak as well. Right? Yeah. Like from a user point of view, it's a leak. Right. And then you, you come as a GNOME developer and you say, well, um, it's you know technically it's not really a leak, you know. <laughs> and it's like, what do I care? I'm a user. For me, it is a leak. And if you say that you made a few technical choices. That's a common theme, I think. Yes, yeah. the common theme, theme is that you that it's a user developer design that you impose changes on the users. So right, we're imposing changes on the users. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. And, and that, that's, that's a great part, that we can make a more inclusive experience by, especially using Flat Pack, because we can create mock-ups and build them automatically and say, here, try this out. 
now, now there's this feeling of I can be part of this, this thing that's constantly moving and changing, uh, rather than here it is six months later. But if, if they're involved during the entire process, uh, then that's a lot. That's a much more powerful statement because it, it's 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 dynamic. Yeah. People responded and said, well, that won't work for me because my use case is right. X, Y, and Z. And the Nautilus developer said, oh, that actually you know, really some of those are good points. You know, what do you think of it? It was it went really good. That's why I brought this up, because there because there was a lot of communication there, but you yeah. still saw a lot of conflict. Yeah, but I, I think the say. conflict was mostly from people who were just complaining and not engaging. Yeah. Well, there, there's a, that's, that's, that's the thing with tribalism, right? Yeah, yeah. Where people, because uh, they're so deathly afraid that whatever we do is not going to be a default experience for everyone, that rather than, you know, just our particular thing. I mean, I think over the years they've seen that for them does create new realities. You know, so that's because Gnome uh, is much more involved in the entire ecosystem than uh, the bottom line developers. So they're engaging in lots of different ways. And, uh, they're not afraid to say, they're not afraid to go out. If something needs to be fixed, they will go, they'll go everywhere, right? They'll go to the right place to do it. Um, especially in the early days of Gnome 2, that's exactly what happened. I mean, that was also where that meme started, right? That their own developers are <laughs> uh, forcing changes. But this sort of funny thing was, was for a lot of these people, complaining to them too was the was the best thing that ever happened. And uh, but they're the same developers, <laughs> so you know. But I think I think the the kind of changes. Especially, I like the GitLab stuff. Um, you know, getting getting more people involved in that. Um, using terminology as more positive. Is a, is a way to go. Um, so, I mean, those are the kind of things that, that I think going forward. I, I know this is one of the things I want to talk about during the presentation talk is how how to have our team more engaged. On Especially if there's problems in, in Mozilla. I mean, because we can we can engage in conflict resolution, right? Uh, a lot of the changes we made, I made sure like I got involved in this. How do how do we close bugs? Like you know, won't fix is like the biggest slap in the face. <laughs> right? We close the bug, won't fix. And for some reason, I I I know for me like won't fix. It's like it really is. Feels like a smack. But sometimes it doesn't need that. So like GitLab is kind of out of scope. So I like out of scope. That's the, it's, I, I, it's it's so much better because it doesn't say anything. It just it's not it's not in scope. But point fix <laughs> it is like. <laughs> so um, I think I'm out of time here. I have one minute. So any, anybody have some closing comments? All right. Oh.
and sometimes that it can be done as an authority figure. When I do that, I come in as an authority figure. I just sit there and say, I need to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Which works. So, anyway, thanks for coming. Uh, I appreciate all the uh, conversations. It's just waiting to clap, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> thanks.